Matsubashu wrote, Every day is a journey, and the journey itself is home. Where's your home? We've had this question. For me, this is like the how are you question. Do you want the short answer or the honest answer? Where's my home? I'll give you the honest answer. I was 11 years old when I went to boarding school. My mother and sisters moved to London, and I would go and visit them, but the new place with my stepfather, the stepfather, it never felt like home. And it was uncomfortable. And I was more secure at a distance, isolated from them. My comfort zone became elsewhere. And at 20 years old, elsewhere took me to New York. My home was like paper, it was light. I could roll it up and take it with me. And I kept moving, eventually to Thailand. I'm a photographer, and home is a recurring theme in my work. My work, my photography, was a way for me to communicate my journey. But since coming to Thailand, it is my way to communicate the journey of others. In 2006, I began a project to document the resettlement of a family to the United States. They're a family of refugees. I wanted to tell a story of hope, a story of transformation. And their journey to find a new home brought me back from elsewhere. And that's been transformative for me. John Ruskin wrote, this is the true nature of home. It is the place of peace, the shelter not only from injury, but from all terror, doubt, and division. Internal armed conflicts have been fought in Burma for over 60 years. Government troops destroy villages in a brutal policy to starve opposition forces from any source of support. This is Taiju. Taiju was a rice farmer before the Burmese army attacked his village. He fled across the border to Thailand with his wife and children, and they stayed at a refugee camp. There are over 140,000 refugees in camps in Thailand and many of them, like Taju and his family, are ethnic Karen. This is Taju's eldest daughter and son-in-law, and they're holding their son. They're standing in front of the house that Taju built out of bamboo at the camp, and the family lived in this house for 10 years as they were waiting to see what would happen to them. I met Taju as his family as they started their journey. Although they're being resettled to the United States, they don't speak English, but we share Thai as a second language, so we could communicate comfortably. Taju and his wife, Shejie, had children aged between 6 and 20 years old, and I wanted to show how the journey would be for them, how it would be different for each of them. And they invited me to visit them at their destination in Buffalo, New York. I arrived in winter about a month later. There was snow on the ground. It was a shock to the family. It was a shock to me. It was freezing. And uh, there's a charity to give them clothes when they arrive. And, a and uh, there's an agency that will help with their housing and help with their orientation at the beginning. But after that, they're on their own. Uh, the children were already enrolled in school. And there was some kind of routine to the day. Just Two days before I arrived, Shejie gave birth to a baby girl, and they named her Elizabeth. They wanted to give her a Western name. And though this picture was taken at the hospital, uh, they actually gave birth to her at their apartment. Much of this first trip was defined by the unfamiliar, the urban landscape, the weather, the scale of things, supermarkets are huge. We went up and down the aisles trying to find food and found boxes of what was unrecognizable. I was booked in a motel. I didn't want to be a burden to the family. They had invited me to stay with them. Uh, 
but we, we hadn't known each other for that long, and I was, I was just getting to know them intimately. After a few days, or just a few days with them, to go back to the hotel room, it was a, an empty and charmless place, and I accepted Taju's invitation. They didn't want me to be alone, and I certainly felt very welcome with them. I knew that their beds were too soft to sleep on. We all slept on the floor in the living room. It was cold, and, and it was the only room with a heater. So we slept on it, we're fully clothed with a pile of blankets on us. Um, but it was really comfortable. Uh, they were eager that I visit them again. And this is a relationship in which, rather than being a passive observer, I was able to participate. I knew at the very beginning that this would be a long-term project. Uh, but I didn't know quite out how I'd do it until I made this visit. And it gave me the idea to visit at 15-month intervals to coincide with the seasons. So I, next time I'd visit would be in spring. To visit winter, spring, summer, autumn, and then winter again would coincide with five years. And at five years, they're eligible for US citizenship. And then they would really be Americans. So, when I visited them in the spring, I found that JJ had given birth to twins. This time, she almost made it to the hospital. Matthew was born in the car as it sped on the way to the hospital, and Mark was born right out front of the emergency room doors. <laughs> the children were starting to resemble American kids. They had adopted uh, styles, interests, body language. And what was mundane, well, what was novel was becoming mundane. And the uh, domestic life in America, uh, dealing with household chores and learning the benefits of having carpeting. When I arrived in the summer, the third trip, I found them to be much more stable. They had a steady household income. And Elizabeth and her nephew, Xu Pong, taught me that if you really want to understand all the nuances of Finding Nemo, you've got to watch it at least seven or eight times. <laughs> and the eight-year-old girl, Sha, was speaking English fluently, even choosing to speak English with her brothers. And they're all Karen speakers. And she chose to speak Karen with her parents. And Taju had started his job at a hydroponic greenhouse, growing really fantastic quality tomatoes. And although we still converse in Thai to this day, he had picked up some English, and he introduced me to his American co-workers, his friends there. And the boys, they'd have a difficult time when they first arrived. But they were getting to know other people in the neighborhood and feeling accepted. Taju and JJ have few expectations for their lives in Buffalo. For them, the resettlement was for their children. They wanted to give them security, uh, some opportunity any kind of future other than the indecision of being, and the, the, the uncertainty of being in the camps in Thailand, because they could still have been sent back to Burma. Taju thinks that if the fighting stops in Burma, he might even like to return. But most of his children haven't even set foot in Burma. In fact, Elizabeth, Matthew and Mark are taking their first steps in Buffalo. And Shah and her older brothers, they're developing their unique Korean American identity. After 10 years at a refugee camp, they're making a new home. Taju, JJ, and their family have allowed me into their lives. And it's their abiding generosity and tolerance of me and my camera that has made this documentary possible. Sha
Shah drew this picture in the spring of 2008 when I visited with my partner Zoe. She's drawn us wearing traditional Karen clothing and when asking us how we write our names, Zoe explained that her name has an umlaut, the two dots, because it's special. So Shah wanted hers to be special too. <laughs> This is one of my favorite pictures of myself because it's so consciously inclusive. At the end of this year, 2011, in the winter, I'll go and visit them again. And although that will be the completion of this project, it will not be the end of my relationship with them. George Moore wrote, a man travels the world over in search of what he needs and returns home to find it. At the time of starting this project, I'd been to London to visit my family only three times in almost 20 years. But now, each time I travel from Thailand to Buffalo, I take the opportunity to go by London, and I visit my family. In my work, I strive for images with in intimacy. I want to communicate unguarded moments, so I must be unguarded. Taju and his family inspired me to take pictures of my family. Rather than being a passive observer, I now participate. I no longer feel the impulse to retreat to elsewhere. Elsewhere is no longer my home. I have another chance to be a son, to learn how to be an uncle, and to be the brother I want to be. Where's my home? My home is an emotional place, and I've always been welcome. Thank you.